happy Mothering Sunday and a very warm welcome to our service from St Peter's Walton as we celebrate and give thanks to God for our mothers. But Mothering Sunday also provides an opportunity for us to thank God for all who have given and continue to give mother-like care to others, maybe even to ourselves. For those of you who might be new to our service, my name is Julia Pratt and I am the curate here at St Peter's. Well, I do hope that any children, and that includes adult children, um, who are joining us for worship this morning, will treat your mothers today as best as you can and that you will seek to make this day a very special day for her. But we know that while many of us are celebrating today, this day can be a sad day for some people. And for others, this particular Mothering Sunday will be hard. Because there are people whose mothers are no longer with us, this side of heaven. There are mothers whose children are no longer with us. There are women who desperately want or wanted to be mothers and for whom this has not been possible. And there are people whose relationships with family members have broken down. And of course, this year, there are many mothers and children who cannot be together because of the restrictions. So let us remember all these people and many more. Let us remember them in prayer on this day, asking God, our loving Father, to be close to them today and for them to know his blessing. But as we all come before our loving Heavenly Father, it is good to say sorry for the wrong things that we have said, thought or done. So let's just all take a moment as we think back over the past week and just think about those things which we know have hurt others and have hurt God. In the book of the prophet Hosea, we hear God speaking to his people Israel about the wrong things they are doing. And in the middle of saying these things, God says some wonderful words to his people. And in this reading, Israel is called Ephraim. And God compares his relationship with Israel, Ephraim, to that of a parent and a little child. So listen to these wonderful words. This is God speaking. It was I who taught Ephraim to walk, taking them by the arms, but they did not realise that it was I who healed them. To them, I was like one who lifts a little child to the cheek and I bent down to feed them. Well, with that beautiful picture of God in our minds, let us pray. Father, we confess that we have often failed to live as your children. Father, we confess that we have often failed to meet with you, our Father, in prayer. Father, you always hear us when we call to you for help. But we confess that we often ignore the cries of others. Father of all mercies, cleanse us from our sins and restore us in your image to the praise and glory of your name. Amen. Well, before we worship God in song, 
let's watch a short film from the charity Home for Good, which highlights how people care for children in different ways and also how this day is difficult for some. And I'll say a little bit more about this charity Home for Good a bit later on in our service. Happy Mother's Day, Sarah. After waiting to have a child for so many years, you must be overjoyed to have Isaac. Today is about you and all those who are still waiting. Happy Mother's Day, midwives of Israel. You risk your own safety to ensure the survival of countless children. Today is about you and all those who care for children and call it work. Happy Mother's Day, daughter of Pharaoh. By welcoming Moses into your family, you showed so much love Today is about you and all foster and adoptive parents. Happy Mother's Day, Naomi. You walked with Ruth as a friend and cared for a child as your own grandchild. Today is about you and all grandmothers and extended family who care for children. Happy Mother's Day, Hannah. You let go of Samuel, even though it hurt you. Today is about you and all those whose children are not living with them right now. Happy Mother's Day, Anna. Life didn't go as you had hoped, yet you found peace and worth in your service to God. Today is about you and all those experiencing heartache at how things have turned out. Happy Mother's Day, Lois and Eunice. Your faith changed Timothy's life. Today is about all those who are playing a part in raising the next generation. Mother's Day is about you, whatever your role might be.
went to the area around Tyre. He went into a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. But Jesus could not stay hidden. A woman heard that he was there. Her little daughter had a distressing illness. So the woman quickly came to Jesus and fell at his feet. She was not Jewish. She was Greek, born in Phoenicia, in Syria. She begged Jesus to make her daughter better. Jesus told the woman, it is not right to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. First, let the children eat all they want. She answered, that is true, Lord, but the dogs on the table can eat the pieces of food that the children don't eat. Then Jesus said, that is a very good answer. You may go, your daughter is healed. The woman went home and found her daughter lying in bed and well again. Amelia, thank you so much uh, for that reading. Uh, you made the story live, so thank you so much and thank you to all our readers. I was suddenly reminded of a, a time when um, Sue and I were going shopping and I stayed outside uh, with um, a pushchair and Sue went into the shop Mother Care. You may remember Mother Care. And while I stood out there, I think I was a bit bored and tired, and someone came past uh, as a complete stranger and said, I think you need father care, and just walked on. It was really funny to me. Uh, but the word Mother Care uh, reminds me that all of uh, our mothers or those who show mother care are the most fantastic picture of God. So let's think of mothers and those who give us mother care and what it's like uh, for them uh, day by day. So here we go. I'd love you to join in a mime. So let's start. Are you ready for miming? So here we go. Let's pretend to be getting the breakfast ready for the children. OK, so cereal packets. Uh, plates, uh, spoons, and uh, milk, and then uh, get while the children are eating, uh, it's time to do school bags. So books, um, lunchbox, and into the school bag, PE kit, zip them up, and it's time to, oh, for the school. So into the car, open the car doors, get the children in, get the bags in, strap them up, shut the doors, drive, open the doors, get the children out, take them to school, bye, back to the car. Oh, we're eco-church. Let's pretend uh, this time we walk the children to school and walk all the way back afterwards, having to say bye children. And then uh, it's time to do all the chores. Uh, go shopping with the shopping trolley, up to get things from the top shelf, down to get things from the bottom shelf, get things from the middle shelf, and then home. And then it's make the beds, uh, put the clothes in the washing machine, uh, put the crockery into the dishwasher. <gasps> Oh, let's go back to when it was homeschooling. So set the children's laptop or computer up or whatever it is. And then your own to do uh, working at home. Let's pretend it's doing the accounts. And oh, what, what, what book do you need? The Gruffalo. 
and then someone at work thinks you're calling them the Gruffalo. No, I'm doing homeschooling. I wasn't calling you a Gruffalo. Uh, and then it's time for PE with Joe Wicks. Get your shorts on. No, boss, I'm not talking to you. Homeschooling and work. Well, they're amazing. Those who give us mother care. Now, in the Bible story, it was amazing mother care that that woman showed. And it's not like today where you can go to the doctor or the chemist or even the hospital and there are medicines available or advice online. They had to look to someone who might be a healer. So we're going to go back into the story and I'm going to invite you to join in things to say or actions to do so that you're able to uh, join in the story and learn some lessons because in a sense I feel that Jesus learnt from this woman about uh, something important about uh, his role. So here we go, I hope you're going to join in. First of all the woman had a daughter who had such awful things going on in her head like terrible headaches and it was as though there were voices inside her. Imagine that you're the same and shout, I'm not listening to you. I'm not listening to you. Ow, it hurts. And then the woman heard about Jesus coming near to where she lived. And she'd heard wonderful things about Jesus, all he had taught and all that he had done. And so she got really excited. Look excited. <laughs> Well, she rushed over and she saw Jesus and she called out to Jesus, Jesus, son of David, help us. And I think the disciples wanted to give Jesus a break. So in a way, they said, like, go away, you join in, go away. But she cried out all the more and you join in, Jesus, help us. Jesus, help us. And Jesus really said, I'm sent to my own people first. I need to deal with them. It's like having your own family at a table and you've got to deal with them first. And then she came back with the most amazing answer. Even when people are at the table, sometimes they throw bread down to the dogs. And she just was not giving up. And imagine she's uh, saying that we'll eat whatever's thrown from the table. Put your hands out as though you're going to catch something. And now catch it. And what she caught was the love of God. And Jesus, in a sense, was feeling you have shown such good sense, you've shown such care and such faith, your daughter is healed. And that mum must have forever, for the rest of her life, felt so grateful to Jesus. So I want you to make a heart shape. Here's the, here's the green heart, but uh, make a heart shape. And I want to think of four things that it teaches us. I think the first is about the gift of children, which touches our hearts. It touches the hearts of mothers and uh, families and communities. The second thing I think it touches our hearts about is celebrating the gift of mothers uh, to children, whether through birth, uh, through fostering or adoption. What about the heart of the woman? It ached, it broke, it burst, it soared, it hurt, it always hoped. And that's why we give gifts of chocolates and flowers, hugs and kisses. If you can, I hope you do that. And there's already been some chocolates and flowers being given around. Well, my mum's not around anymore, so I'm going to blow her a kiss. Mum, thanks for all your love. 
And as we think of those who are amazing mums and those showing parent love, the story comes from Syria. So let's remember those who are mums and showing mother care in places which are full of war or where they're refugees. There's a third sort of heart love that I want to celebrate and it's those who show mother care in the community and outside. Let me give you three examples. The first is in worship through play in our church. Older children care for the younger children, particularly with crafts. Thank you, older children, for showing mother care to those children. I also want to share uh, about Andy Cheatham. Sorry to do this to you, Andy, if you're watching. But Andy, I noticed particularly he was able to do this when he was in his wheelchair uh, at the 10.30 service. He would so often ask how people were at caring for them. He showed mother care, parent care to us. And the final example of showing real love uh, has been, I think, Barbara Brown, so who's gone to be with Jesus. Uh, she has shown so much love and care to so many, uh, bringing them to faith or loving and caring them. Uh, and so there are lots of ways in which we can show that. But the final uh, thing of celebrating love, I think, is God's love. Uh, God, his heart, uh, it aches for us, it breaks for us, it bursts for us, it hurts for us, it soars for us, it always hopes. So as I'm holding on to this heart, let's hold on to the love that God has for us, like the most loving parent that he's with us always. Let us pray. For as a mother comforts her child, says the Lord, I will comfort you. Lord, thank you for all your love, comfort and strength. And most of all, the, the your joy of your presence, which will never leave us. Amen. Lord Jesus, we pray for our mothers and thank you for all that our mothers are to us and for all they do for us. We pray for all those for whom days like today are hard. Please let them feel your love and know how precious they are to you. Lord, we pray for our world. We pray for where we live and our local area. We pray for our countries and all the leaders in authority that they may shine for you. We pray for all those who are suffering and for everyone who is alone and feeling sad. For all they were poorly. May they know God's love and peace that passes all understanding. We pray for all those who have died recently, especially their friends and family. Loving God, we give thanks for all who cares for us, who have encouraged us and helped us grow, who have forgiven us and cared for us while we were unwell, who have supported us when times were hard, who have challenged us, who has told us about you. Nurturing God, we give you thanks. Amen. We give you thanks. Amen.
Some of us have specs to lay All of us are different families Some of us are very loud Some of us don't make a sound That's because we're different You and me you for joining us today as we have worshipped our God and our Saviour. Before our blessing I have a couple of notices to bring to your attention. Well if your Saturday nights are becoming very dull, watching Casualty or The Voice, why not join us on the 27th of March for the challenge of an online escape room. If that is sort of tempting you a little, you can find more details on our website. And we mentioned last week about the Liverpool South Deanery 24-7 prayer event, which is taking place during Holy Week. Can I just remind everybody about that? and encourage you to sign up even just for half an hour during Holy Week. And you'll find more details about the 24-7 prayer event in the Pray section of our website. Now, following our blessing, we will have the final showing of a short clip, which provides one way you might want to try to help you to read the Bible more. Next week, another member of the team, which meets to pray about and discuss how we all might read the Bible more, will share another way in which you might want to engage with the Bible. So the excitement we offer you is never ending. But after this short clip about the Bible, we will then have the second of our videos today from the charity Home for Good. Now, Home for Good is a charity which works to encourage the church in the United Kingdom to respond to the needs of vulnerable children. It encourages individuals, families to think about adopting or fostering children. But it also seeks to equip churches to understand the needs of and to support the families of vulnerable children. And one of the Bible passages it is using in its Mothering Sunday material this year is Romans chapter 12 verses 10 to 13, St Paul's letter to the Romans. And that passage ends with the words, share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Now, it's not a long video, but it's a video which we hope will encourage us all on this Mothering Sunday to pray for adoptive parents and for all who foster children. And also to pray for these children and young people themselves. 
And it may be that, that it encourages you to consider whether God might be calling you to think about adoption or fostering. But before these videos, let's just take a moment of quiet as we then come before God and ask for his blessing upon us all. May God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the source of all goodness and growth, pour his blessing upon all things created and upon us, his children, that we may use his gifts to his glory and the welfare of all peoples. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with each one of us today and always. Amen. YouVersion is a Bible app available on the App Store or Google Play. The app offers access to different Bible versions, a verse for the day, audio Bibles, prayer journaling and Bible plans. The plans offer short daily readings on specific topics or sections of the Bible for you to read on your own or together with friends who have the app. Such an easy way to connect with God and others each day. I love it. Within the app, there is also a short, simple daily devotion and prayer suitable for an older primary school child for you to read together. And for the younger child, there is a version Bible app just for them with great animations and interactive learning. I would highly recommend this app and it's free. So why not give it a try? Gila is my mum's friend at church. She taught me to swim before my school trip so I wouldn't be left out. Karis is my support worker and she helps me communicate. She stands up for me to make sure I get what I need. I meet up with Becca every month. We just chat and it really helps. One day when I was feeling angry, I bashed my bike against the wall. A neighbour Karen came to mend it without making it a big deal. Mum and Dad adopted all three of us, so I wasn't separated from my sisters. And when I still feel that I need to look after them, Mum helps me understand and gives me special time to be myself. My youth worker Kate listened to me and helped me tell my parents what was happening. Tessa is a teacher in my church. Over the summer she's spent lots of time with me, helping me with my letters and numbers. Mum has always been there for me and I've never felt different to my brothers who are her birth children. Mother's Day can be difficult for many of us for a variety of reasons but especially for young people in care. It can be a painful reminder of relationships lost or parents that they never knew. It can be a painful reminder of relationships that are difficult and strained. But it can also be an opportunity for them to be thankful for the many women in their lives who have nurtured them and cared for them in the way that Paul writes about. You could be one of those women. Could a young person or a vulnerable child experience the love of God and the radical hospitality that the Bible talks about in your church? I'm here today because people like you cared for me. You could be part of someone else's story starting today.